Lee Priest on new Aussie TV series, is Raphael Brandeo, Horse MD, John De La Rosa, and Antoine Valiant all 2024 Arnold Classic threats? Plus, we get the 2024 contest plans for Sergio Oliva Jr., Good Vito, and Carlos Thomas Jr. So we've got all that, plus much more. What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and we are back with another bodybuilding news video, and let's kick this one off with Sergio Oliva Jr. announcing his 2024 contest plans on a podcast with Jonathan Warren. The link to that full podcast is in the description below, but let's listen to what Sergio had to say because he has his eyes set on one particular competitor and competing against him, so let's get into it. So are you getting ready to dial up for, for a prep? Yeah, I'm going to start cleaning it up now. I think it'd be stupid to be out here and not do one of these shows that are just one of these European, like you can do the Spain, Italy, uh, what is the other one? Portugal, right? So the shows they're mentioning as well here, you've got the Empro Classic Spain Pro, which is on the 15th to 16th of June in Alicante, Spain. Then you've got the Flex Weekend Italy Pro, which is on the 23rd of June, just one week later in Milan, Italy. And then you've got the Mr. Big Evolution Portugal Pro, which is on the 7th of July, so two weekends after that. So you've got three shows over four weekends, and they're those European shows. And I love how they're actually sort of bunched together, and I think we're going to see some really good competitors there. So let's listen on to what else Sergio had to say. Yeah, exactly. Um, so there's like three that are right here. Honestly, I can't say between me and you because it's on the show. I'd really like to hop in the the Spain show that's here in June uh, against Crizo. That's exactly um, what I'm thinking. I would love to see you and Crizo next to each other. That's what I wanted to ask you about. And if we see an improved Sergio Oliva Jr., which I think we'll see working with Neil Hill, we've mentioned out there training with Dorian Yates. I saw this update on his story maybe about a week ago now. I asked him to send the full res one through and he, he declined. So I, I have to work with it and have to contort the image uh, to put it up there. But um, Sergio is sort of still keeping things under wraps, he's keeping things quiet. And I think that if he can come in and, you know, now he's going to be competing in June sort of time. We're in February right now. So we've got March, April, May, June. We're about four months out. So he's kicking off his prep with Neil Hill. He looks like he's added a good amount of muscle and training under Dorian Yates. It seems like he has less distractions now and he's able to focus more in on bodybuilding because his last prep where he competed last year, he did the Cali. It was hugely interrupted obviously being incarcerated for being involved in an accident where someone passed away and obviously he was in no fault of Sergio but the processes in Dubai when he's over there you know caused a lot of issues for him during his prep as well so it's understandable why Sergio wasn't at his very best but he still came in pretty damn good and placed third in that Cali Pro but Anyway, I'm very excited to see Sergio on stage once again. And let me know how you think he'll go up against Mikel Crizo, because I really do believe we'll see an improved Sergio Oliva Jr. Now, some announcements on who's competing where. And the first one is from Good Vito. He's competing in the Detroit Pro. I believe he's probably also doing that Arnold Classic in Brazil as well. Detroit, and maybe we even see him go on to New York, but I don't believe we will see that because it's pretty much, he wouldn't have to know that he's not going to beat like a Nick Walker, probably not going to beat a Tony Burton, although some people do debate and say that he could be as high as like top six in the Olympia this year. I don't believe that to be the case, but many do actually say that. So great to see him doing that show. And also, I don't know what's up with this picture because that doesn't look like a real smile. It looks like it's been put into one of those like fake smile apps, but I enjoy the news all the same. Now onto another guy that's announcing his 2024 contest plans, and that's Carlos Thomas Jr. This is on the Fit Nation podcast. Beatty hosts that one. He does a phenomenal job. I've been on the show before. There's an episode, I believe, about a week ago, a little over a week ago, and Nick Walker was on there, um, Stuart Sutherland, a whole bunch of guys that are regularly on this podcast, and it was really, really fun. But here's what Carlos Thomas Jr. sort of had to reveal on the latest episode of the Fit Nation podcast. Okay, did, did you announce it publicly that you're doing Brazil? Because I wasn't sure if that was public knowledge. Did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm down here, bro, and we're doing it. We're doing you heard it. heard it here okay. first, yeah. folks. So Carlos Thomas Jr., as you can see here, he's down there in Brazil with his sponsor, Darkness, and they're obviously based in Brazil. So it makes a lot of sense for him to go down there and increase his popularity a ton among Brazilian fans too. So I think it's a very, very smart move. They also did say in that podcast, he was doing some tour day trainings. And I was actually thinking when they first said that, 
How's that going to be on his body? Because he does have that ulcerative colitis, which he does have flare-ups with. And he mentioned doing the tour days, he had a flare-up while he was over there a couple of weeks back. And he said the main thing for him is he holds a lot of fluid. Now, obviously, when inflammation's obviously increased a huge amount, and when your body's under stress, it's harder to gain muscle, although it doesn't appear to be that way for Carlos Thomas Jr. because he always looks absolutely insane. But I do think it plays a role in terms of getting his body to that point on stage where you're going to look your all-time best because obviously when you're pushing for a contest, anyone out there that's competed before, you know your body is overreaching, you're overstressed, and he has a huge likelihood for either a flare-up or something that's bordering on that, which is more inflammation in the body, more water retention, and you just won't get that tight look that we want to see from Carlos Thomas Jr. on stage. But I hope he has that under control and he really does take that side of it. And I know he takes that side of it seriously, but if he needs to back off, I hope he's able to back off and he doesn't have you know contractual agreements to compete and things like that that sort of force him to get up on stage and put himself through a prep. Hopefully that's not a thing for Carlos Thomas Jr., but I really hope he gets that under control and we get to see him on stage because we are going to be seeing him on stage at the Brazil Arnold Classic. I believe we're getting Rafa and a whole bunch of other names on stage there. And then he said Detroit Pro is a maybe, which is only one week after. And then I believe he said he's doing a New York Pro as well. So it's going to be really cool to see him on stage multiple times and hopefully his body and physique holds up through that contest prep as well. Now, we've got a cool update here from Martin Fitzwater from left to right. Martin Fitzwater, blessing a water boot and Brett the Butcher Wilkin. Martin has taken a trip out from Texas to Florida as they both prepare for the 2024 season. Martin Fitzwater is doing that Detroit Pro after being knocked back from the Arnold Classic people on getting an invite there. So he's focused his efforts on Detroit. I believe he'll probably go on and do New York and maybe... Who knows, maybe some other shows after that, but maybe Martin will qualify that Detroit Pro. He's got to go in as one of the favorites. The competitors list is looking pretty damn good, and these guys are looking really good in this photo. Brett's got those crazy, crazy thick abs, which is always poke out, and here's some more updates from the guys as well lately. Um, the one of Brett that you'll see is, uh, I believe, as of about two weeks ago now, but both guys, I think, are going to come in really good in 2024, and I think we're going to see some contest wins, and we're seeing some content now up on YouTube. I'll put the link in the description below to their latest training video as well. I believe it's on Brett or Martin's channel. I think Brett's possibly, but there's going to be a ton of content coming out from those guys, and I do want to restart the Bodybuilding University podcast, which you guys, I know, enjoy on here, but I'm actually going to put it on another channel, so make sure you stay to the end of this video for more information on that. We're throwing it back to the old school of photos of Nick Walker in his basement. Progress photos. We saw photos in the same spot in the past. Now we're seeing it a little bit different. I believe before there's like a couch in the background. Now we've got some shelving with all of Nick Walker's merchandise and clothing that he's now selling. And it, it's really cool. It's almost like a rocky story. I think I heard Guy Sistanino mention it, who he does a podcast with, Mutant in the Mouth. Go check it out. And he mentioned it's like a Rocky story going back to where it all sort of began, training for this contest, you know, going back to competing at the New York Pro again, which he did to qualify for his first Olympia, prepping for that and winning it and then getting top five in his first Olympia. Insane story and winning the Arnold Classic that year. Very, very good year for Nick Walker. He's running it back, gone back home to Jersey and he's prepping, going old school, maybe going back to some of the same gyms that he trained at in the past. I don't know, it's a really cool story and we're going to be seeing more of these basement physique update pictures as he's about what 14 12 somewhere around that weeks out of a new york pro i'll uh, nail down that date as we uh, get a little bit closer and as you can see here too his sweeps do appear to be improving um, in some recent physique updates now before we get into our arnold classic physique updates i want to mention this story lee priest is on a new tv show here in australia it's made by the same guy, Paul Fennick, that made the previous shows he's been on, like Fat Pizza, I believe it's Local Council, it's called. There's a bunch of other shows he's been on recently and in the past as well. Paul Fennick's an Australian comedian, and his new show is called Outback Outlaw Comedian, or maybe it's Outback Comedian Outlaw. One or the other, or Outlaw, Outback Comedian. It's something, one of those arrangements of the names, but Lee Priest is on this one, and you can see him here hitting a front double bicep pose, looking pretty damn impressive too, so I'm looking forward to watching this and seeing how much of a role Lee plays in this TV show, and if you are watching from outside the country, I'm sure you can find it online anyway, but I'll link it all up uh, once that show actually does come out as well, so shout out to Lee Priest on getting some more mainstream TV time. Hey guys, I'm interrupting this video to let you know about My Coach AI. My Coach AI is a revolutionary coaching software. 
and it should be used literally by all coaches. Now, Brendan, who reached out to me from my coach AI, I was skeptical at first because I heard the word AI and I'm like, is this gonna be cookie cutter plans? Is it gonna be made by AI? All that sort of stuff. I had all these questions and I was concerned and I wasn't willing to promote something that just gave cookie cutter plans. Now, this is not that at all. It's a way of managing all your clients, their nutrition, their training, their check-ins. It's got it all there, including payments as well. Plus, the other cool aspect, and there's so many of them, you have to check it out yourself. The link is in the description below. But if one of your clients, for example, is training at home that day, or they don't have the right food or anything like that, they can just go on there and sub it out. So they can say, I've got no barbells and no dumbbells for this workout, or I've got no machines, I've only got barbells and dumbbells and body weight. And it will change those exercises for you in that workout plan so your client doesn't miss a beat and you're not having to go, okay, well, you don't have that. Now I've got to rewrite your program for the entire day. Or if they don't have a certain food, it will quickly sub it out for them. It just makes coaching so much easier for yourself as a coach and your client. So you have to check it out. The link is in the description below. I hope you guys enjoy it and just check it out for yourself. And now let's get into the Arnold Classic physique update. So we'll kick it off here with Breon Ansley in the last few days, really bringing in, looking much more impressive. Now, one area where I think Breon falls down a little bit, but look how well he poses it, is in the leg department. And he will be up against some guys with some pretty damn good round legs as well, like Urs Kalachinski, Ramon Dino. You've got a bunch of guys there that have pretty damn good legs. I think he compares a little bit better in that regard with like a Wesley Visses who doesn't have the big rounded outer sweep. But then you've got Michael DeBull there as well who has the very rounded outer quads. And it's going to be a real battle in that top five. Now, there's a few guys there that I don't think will battle for the win. But some of these guys are really improving like your Wesley Visses, like your Michael DeBulls. And it seems like they're pushing up a little bit closer to these guys. But Breon looks like he's bringing a bit of extra muscle. Now he has more of that room to move in the classic physique. And I was worried a week or two ago about his conditioning level, but he's sort of proved me wrong and he's really brought it in those last couple of weeks. And a guy he's up against as well, as I mentioned, Wesley Visses, who has just a great physique who just tends to get better and better and better. He has some crazy detail, like through his delt, his chest, those striations. I think they get extra points for me because it's not a super, super common thing nowadays in bodybuilding compared to what it was of yesteryear. And he brings outrageous conditioning, classic shape. And yes, he doesn't have the traditional tiny waist and he's got a very different looking physique. I think it's a very cool looking physique and it is classic to me at least anyway. But let me know what you think in the comments below on that because Wesley Visses is bringing all time best conditioning and he just gets better every show he does. And now the favorite for this contest is Ramon Dino, who you can see posing here looking ultra shredded. He's got the roundness with those deep sort of grainy cuts at this point. Like he's getting those cuts in the muscle that sort of look grainy, even though he's got that extreme roundness. Now he works with Chris Aceto, who, you know, obviously has to kill him to get down. And Chris has mentioned as well, but he has to really, really push it. So yeah, I think that Ramon is going to be very, very tough to beat here. And onto a fellow Brazilian in Rafael Brandeo looking insane in his latest updates from every angle you see leg picks go up and leg videos and then you see this most muscular which is absolutely insane he's added considerable muscle to his physique and previously when he's on stage one and a half years ago he was top 10 in the olympia taking that one and a half years to bring this package i think is going to be something special i think it's going almost underrated some people placing him down in fifth and sixth. I think the conditioning is there. He's seeming to get some dryness into his muscle as well. He's got Neil Yoda Hill there. I mean, honestly, I think he will be a clear third place. Now, that's no disrespect to anyone else because you've got some really, really good guys in this lineup. But I have him in clear third. And I just think he's going to be a lot for anyone to handle, including fellow Brazilian horse MD Marcelo De Angelis. 124 kilograms nine days out. I believe that's above 270 pounds and uh, looking pretty damn impressive. And we got to see these photos posted up, some high res stuff from Horse MD. And it's really amazing how much muscle he's added to his physique. As long as he brings it in really tight, like this side chest, you're just not seeing the same lines through that chest. And that's what I sort of mean in, in pro bodybuilding these days. It's much less likely to see that, whether that's through insulin, whether that's through just adding that huge amount of muscle where the lines don't come out as much. I don't exactly know, but I hope we get to see some more lines coming out in that chest. But 
where he doesn't have lines there, he's got crazy lines in other spots. Plus, he could be like fully loaded up in terms of sodium. And obviously, this is post-workout. So the muscle is over-pumped where you're not getting those same lines. He may well have just trained chest. So I'm not too sure. But he looks pretty damn insane. And even this rear lat spread, which the back is a weaker point for Horse MD, the lat spread looks insane. And I think it does look better than it previously did. Now, I've heard Milos Sarchev say, the lat spread looks great and all that sort of stuff. I'm like, you go back to that contest, he's still not winning the back lat spread. He's still not really going close to winning the back lat spread. So I think if he can even beat some people in the rear lat, not look completely overshadowed in that rear double bicep, he's going to be very, very dangerous because from some other angles, he is very impressive. And like Rafael Brandeo, uh, he's got insane legs too. Now, onto another guy that I think could really surprise and will really surprise at this contest, and that's John De La Rosa. This posted up by Patrick Tour and then shared by him as well. You're getting to see now the density, the muscle coming onto John's physique, and just that hardness he's got to the muscle as well. Super dense, super crazy, just overall super impressive. And I believe this was posted up by AJ Kelly Roberts. On the left here, this is John De La Rosa last year in his comeback show. This is however many days out. I can't remember how many days out it was, but it was close to the contest. And then you got John De La Rosa here on the right. What is it? 9, 10, 11 days out of the Arnold Classic. And you can see there is a notable improvement in terms of overall size. And I was looking at the legs going, eh, I'm not sure. But I think John, when he gets on stage, his legs just look bigger just because of the hardness to them and the density. They just look bigger than they actually maybe even are. And that upper body is stacked. So I think we're going to see a very good John De La Rosa. And... As I've seen the updates, he has climbed up, climbed up in my predictions. And we've got one more here, and it's from Antoine Valiant, who's been posting a ton of updates, and I'll roll through them on the screen now, but his conditioning is outrageous. I think we're going to see a really, really well-conditioned lineup at this 2024 Arnold Classic, as long as the lighting is good enough and it can show these guys up properly, because there is some insane condition. Guys posting photos saying no filter and... I genuinely believe it as well. And I think we're seeing some really, really good condition because those lines, even if you turn up the, you know, whatever levels on the photos, they're still there. So there's still deep lines in the muscle and there's a certain level of dryness to Antoine. And he's been eating a lot of calories. He's had a different approach to this prep. I've heard him talk on several podcasts and I'm just really happy for the dude. Gone through so much, come back. And I think mean, he's going to look his all-time best at this 2024 Arnold Classic. And he's one of the most underrated IFB pros in the game today, in my opinion. I think he's even been overlooked at some shows. He's an IFB pro contest winner. And I think that he'll probably get back to those ways very, very soon winning some contests. And he did make mention recently as well, he is considering doing the Detroit pro. So you might see like an Antoine up against a Martin Fitzwater, up against a good Vito, up against a whole bunch of names that are jumping into that Detroit pro. But anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Who would you have winning, Antoine Valiant or Martin Fitzwater if, if they go head-to-head -head in Detroit? Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. If you did enjoy this video, give the video a thumbs up, smash that like button, also subscribe and click the notification bell button. That way you'll be notified of every video that goes up for myself, Xavier Wills at Desktop Bodybuilding. Also, you guys may have noticed as well, bit of a rebrand here for Desktop Bodybuilding. So new logo, new look on the channel page, also new look on Instagram. And I pledge to you guys that I'm going to post more content on there as well. Get the discussion going up, get the community going a bit more, and also leave comments too, because I'm going to get to those more as well. So, so that's it from me here. I'm Xavier Wills. This is Desktop Bodybuilding, and we are out.